Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for Powering Your Business Success with Boma in the Gap. Using Zoom, we would love for you to submit some questions as we go, just by hitting the little Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom panel. We've got time for questions at the end. If we don't have time to answer them all today, we will come back to you individually afterwards. Um, but yeah, please do keep those questions coming in as we go. Hopefully we'll answer a lot of them as we go, but we'd certainly love the opportunity to come back to you afterwards, if not. I am Kat Morgan, uh, Sales and Partnerships Manager at BOMA, and joining me today is the lovely Natalie Eddy, General Manager at The Gap. Hi everyone. Thanks for being here, Nat. <laughs> Great to be so, here. Today, um, we're going to chat a little bit about um, why BOMA jumped at the chance to partner with The Gap. Nat's going to talk a little bit about um, Gap's freemium and premium content in BOMA and um, the value of The Gap portal. We're going to talk a little bit about mastering the call to action, so ensuring that your clients do what you want. Um, so that you can then ensure you get a really good return on investment from your marketing. We then will jump into um, getting a return on investment from webinars. They probably are one of the best lead gen tools at our disposal, especially in this post COVID world. We we'll then finish off a little bit of a case study um, of a firm that's using BOMA and the Gap and doing a really great job. So, Let's talk a little bit about why the magic <laughs> happened when we came together. Um, it, it was a little bit like the planets are aligned. You know, um, so BOMA were um, back in the day, so it's probably been a good couple of years now, hasn't it, Nat? Yep. Yeah. So you know, we were really focused on building um, an easy to use digital marketing tool for bookkeepers and accountants. So we were really focused on building a technology platform now, while we did have a content library with some great content from Zero and that we wrote ourselves, when we saw the quality of the content of the gaps, we were absolutely blown away. We realized that it would really complement our platform beautifully. Um, so for those of you familiar, the gaps business development system, um, which you non-gappies will get a little bit of a, um, a sneak preview of today, um, that combined with BOMA's digital marketing platform for delivering content um, really offered a unique opportunity for um, our mutual users to really, um, I guess, get closer to your clients. So help you to really drive growth and really maximize efficiency when it comes to marketing um, your practice. So, as it says on the slide there, with BOMA and the Gap together, um, you can really work harder, not smarter. Um, sorry, <laughs> I was you to work smarter, Trick not question. harder. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's really, um, it's, it's like a digital marketing toolkit. I like to describe it as a marketing campaign um, in a virtual box. Um, together, we can really save you a truckload of time um, and help you to really get closer to your existing clients but also to prospect for new leads. Absolutely. So shortly Nat will take you through um, a bit of a look through the GAPS uh, content and you'll see for yourself why BOMA jumped on the GAP uh, bandwagon. First though I've got a little bit of a poll. Now we've got a couple of quick questions I'm um, just going to try and do two things at once by launching the poll. Um, we want to know if you're delivering webinars now, and if not, why not? Okay, bear with me a second. I'm just going to launch that now. So you should see that there on your screen. Now, this is all anonymous, so please be honest. We want to use this to better support you going forward. So please yeah. go ahead and... Um, Would love your feedback. Oh, great. Some's coming Some's through. Coming yep. Yeah, Wonderful. keep it coming. Yeah. We're definitely finding a lot of our members at The Gap here are running lots of webinars now. They're really getting into the swing of it. So we want to hear mm -hmm. the pain points. And then hopefully we can address some of those in the session today. Absolutely. 
Oh, wow. wow. So not many, mm. not many. Okay, That's cool. Interesting. Okay, we've got another, give you another 10 seconds. Yes, yeah, so the Fantastic. question, please. Um, I'm so going. glad to mm. see that people aren't saying clients not interested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one snuck in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, it's, it's really good that, that, you know, that there's that awareness that there is a desire from the clients mm. to get some information in this way, in this low cost or no cost way of engaging their accountant going forward. So, mm. so I'm going to end the poll now and then display the results, share results. Here they come. So, yeah. As you can see, the majority of you, um, well, actually 23% of you are delivering webinars, which is really great to see. Um, so hopefully for those of you that aren't, um, we'll cover off, you know, some of these worries or concerns um, that you've shared in the answer to number two that we might address those for you today. Um, you're certainly not alone. Um, there's all, often a real mix of why people aren't delivering webinars. And we can see that, you know, what sort of top there, unfamiliar with the delivery platforms, really not surprising. So no. we'll kind of chat over um, a couple of those today um, yeah. and a few all of the aboves. But yeah, interesting that, yeah, that, um, yeah, one that had a client's not interested. Um, and I guess that comes down to potentially the topics that yep. you'd like to select from. So great, thank you so much for sharing that. I will, we will uh, address a lot of those concerns today. Otherwise, we'll follow up with some great resource for you afterwards. So let me just cool. delete that poll. Okay, Nat, so why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, I talked about the value of um, the gap content, why we chose you. So I'd love now, for you to share with us a little bit more on that. Absolutely, cool. So hopefully you can all see the content library screen in the BOMA platform. That's great. So for the non-BOMA subscribers out there, um, let me just give you a bit of a crash course in our gap content. So at the moment, we've got a range of categories in our gap content, right from culture through to customers, events, financial awareness, growth right through to uh, team and structure and, and, and categories like that. So there's a lot of different content in here. Now, if you're, a, um, if you're a BOMA subscriber only, then you'll only have access to content that has this classic gap logo here. So we call the freemium content the classic content. So the difference between the classic content in a nutshell is that only um, BOMA subscribers get um, access to the classic content, but only GAP subscribers get access to the premium content, which is that standard GAP logo there. So uh, beyond that, the key differences in, in the content it, itself really comes down to um, the call to action and the type of um, in-depth how in depth we go in the content. So the classic content's a bit more generic in nature. It's not quite as in depth, but also the call to action has to be somewhat generic because we're not clear. We don't know what you want to do with the content. So, you know, we can't predetermine the call to action or the objective that you may have by sending that content. So we've got to keep it a bit more generic, but it's still really valuable. Uh, we've got one here, for example, on reinventing your product and service offering post COVID. So we've got some really, you know, effective short content that you can push out across your social channels, um, really asking those questions. How are you innovating post COVID or in the new business recovery phase? And then we've got some great pointers here on how to reinvent. Um, and then a little bit of a call to action at the end, call us to see how we can help you with your recovery. So the difference though is when it comes to the premium content, um, it goes a bit more in depth and typically it wraps um, around a service offering. So in the gap, we have, um, we have over 15 different business development services 
in there. So we have a content module for each of those services. We give you everything you need to understand the process, to do effective marketing, to sell a service. So all of the proposals are written for you. They're all electronic acceptance based. Then all of the templates, the pre-work, the, the minutes, everything you need to deliver the service itself. So we're a content organization. We've created those services. So effectively, we've reverse engineered the BOMA content in the BOMA platform to speak to those services, to help our members really uh, market those services in a clear kind of value-based approach. So really articulating the value of the service. So for example, um, any of these premium articles will give some really good value, give value before you extract it, but it will always be in relation to the final paragraph being about how the accounting firm can support the client on this topic with one of their services, which obviously you can deliver um, via our seamless business development portal. So it's all about reverse engineering, I guess, your marketing based on the objectives you have in your business. So whether you want to generate leads, whether you want to sell business planning, you want to send the right marketing that's going to speak to the services that you're going to, you're going to offer. Um, so there's lots of different objectives in BOMA, you know, whether it's nurturing clients, um, you know, or, or whatever, but the topic of the moment um, is definitely business recovery planning, and um, we're writing a lot of content around that topic. Um, that's the mood. Um, we're really, example, uh, really lucky uh, in New Zealand to be in a state of business recovery. Uh, in the southern hemisphere in general. Um, you know, our friends in the UK, for example, our clients there, you know, they're very much still in that crisis mode. So we are trying to develop content for accounting and bookkeeping firms to really stay on top of what's happening now in the business landscape and to adapt their services to meet that. So the other key difference between our premium and our classic content is um, our events content. So if I click on this events category here, all of these pieces of content um, are pre-loaded marketing templates uh, that market the services, be that webinars or other services that we offer in our portal. So everything's loaded, ready to go. To kind of explain that better, I'm just gonna go into our portal to show you a bit more about our, our product. I will keep it brief. So this is our content, um, our content page in our portal. Our portal does a lot. It's got a lot of bells and whistles, but this is where the good content lives. So I'm just gonna stick to this page as to not overwhelm you. So each of these hexagons are um, their own, you know, carefully crafted business development service that the accountant or bookkeeping firm can deliver to their clients. So our most recently published one is business recovery planning. So that's everything you need to help your clients really plan for their recovery post COVID. So we break everything down into a process guide. We've got all of the marketing resources we need to generate sales for that service. And we've got, you know, the proposals themselves and then all of the delivery tools we need to deliver a good business recovery plan. But the best way to generate leads or interest in a new service really is to engage our clients via a webinar. So you'll see down here, we've got gap webinars, seminars and workshops. They're a little bit on hold at the moment because obviously it's a bit weird meeting people face to face and in some parts of the world, we just can't do it yet. So in the gap webinars uh, folder, we have got six published at the moment. These are webinars that our firms are delivering to their clients via the portal. We've also got a webinar templates area where if you've got your own topic, say you, um, you might have a whole lot of uh, building clients or a niche or some industry that you work closely with, you can create your own uh, webinar topic using all of our systems and our process. So, so awesome. Thanks. So yeah, for you guys that, um, uh, answered you're struggling a little bit with a topic if you're a gap member there's some excellent content here ready for you just personalize and deliver to your clients mm. so i'm in the business recovery planning one here so 
this is where you know we've taken it that step further yes we created the business recovery plan service that's all ready for people to deliver outside you know out of the portal but we're thinking about how can we engage our clients and our prospects to get their heads around this new service that we're offering so we can send um, we can send content from BOMA but we can also deliver a webinar so in here we've got so much content, 10 pieces to help you deliver a fantastic webinar, everything from the five page internal process guide that's going to be your Bible when it comes to running the webinar from a um, logistics or operational perspective. Then we've got the webinar information form, making sure you have all of the information you need, you know, the panelists name, the duration, the target, your marketing, everything you need to actually schedule that webinar. And then we've got a guide to scheduling a webinar, which is taking a, a very succinct, um, I guess it's a summary of the key things you need to do whether you're running a webinar from Zoom or GoToWebinar. So a few of you mentioned that you were unfamiliar with webinar delivery platforms. So we've taken our knowledge of that and we've summarized it into a one pager. So it's really kind of foolproof. Then we have the business recovery webinar plan. So we need to think about our marketing lead time with any event. We need to get really clear on our client objectives. So we've pre-populated all of the client objectives here with our knowledge of what that business recovery plan and that webinar looks like so that you can confidently market your clients, telling them what they're going to get from um, attending this webinar. Then it's about setting your goals. You know, do you want to generate 10 leads um, for, for you know, business recovery planning or for new clients, new compliance clients, what is it you want from, from the experience? So really getting clear so that you can then look back and know how successful your campaign was. Then it's down to, you know, how long are you going to spend marketing? If it's a week, if it's two weeks, these are all of the different tasks that you need to do as part of marketing and, and ensuring everything's ready to go for the webinar itself. And then a real simple breakdown of the types of content um, that you need to push out across your social channels, uh, all using BOMA, of course, um, just giving you a bit of a, a clear picture of the kind of work that you're going to do in that space. And it's all pretty simple and pretty easy to do. We've also got, um, you know, the initial webinar invitation, which click of a button and we're in BOMA at that piece and we just need to add our date um, and time for our webinar. We can swap out that image. We can tweak the short content or whatever we want to tweak and hit go or schedule. So everything's already integrated and pre-populated in BOMA for us. We've got that webinar PowerPoint template with very prescriptive delivery notes to make sure that we're covering off all of the key topics in the webinar um, and giving our clients lots of value during the session. Here's a bit of a PDF of what those PowerPoint slides look like. And it's as simple as downloading that template, putting your firm's logo on there, updating who's going to moderate the webinar, um, and then obviously your presenter. And then everything else from here is just what's in the template. You can swap your images. You can play with the PowerPoint master to change the look and feel. But it's really a case of getting your logo on there and updating your colors. It's all very simple. So <laughs> then we have um, the moderator checklist. We know from experience that, you know, 23% of people are a bit nervous <laughs> in the poll. <laughs> and also the moderators get nervous too. And they play an important role. So this is making sure they have everything ready to go on the day of the webinar, um, you know, leaving no stone unturned. Um, and also we've given them a bit of a script so that they know how to introduce the webinar and close the webinar. It's just taking the pain out of it, making it easier. Um, and then of course, we've got that webinar follow-up template. So I guess we've got everything in the gap in BOMA here to market to our existing clients, um, you know, this fantastic webinar we're gonna do for them. But have you got some ideas, Kat, for how we can generate some fresh leads? We're gonna sure, go down this route. Absolutely. Thanks, Nat. Yes, yeah, so obviously you've got here in the content library, 
as Nat showed in the Gap portal, you can click on a BOMA logo, it will bring you to an article in BOMA. So you've got your articles here, which can nurture your current audience. Um, so your current social followers and email database on a topic before you sort of hit them with uh, the event templates. Or I'll just go back to my dashboard for a second. But obviously, if you want to run a BOMA, you want to maximize getting bums on seat. So you might want to use this as an opportunity to prospect for some new leads. So in BOMA, you can then create a social media ad. Now, social media advertising is really great for targeting some new prospects because you can define your audience. So what that means is your ad is shown pretty much to an already qualified uh, list rather than just um, going broad reach in a local paper or something like that. With social advertising, you can really define your audience. So I'm going to choose to run this ad on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can choose just one or the other. Now I'm in Auckland, so I'll just pop that in. Now this is a direct interface with Facebook. So I doubt many of you find 18 year olds to make wonderful clients. No offense to 18 year olds, but I'm going to bump that up to 30 and I might put my maximum age as 50. Now you'll notice as I change these uh, fields that this audience size, so this is an estimate of how many people could possibly see my ad if they're logged in during the time that my ad is running. Choose a gender if you wish, and then we need to define the interests. So this is the most important part. This is the interests of the Facebook user, and it's based on what they've either defined in their profile or what kind of content they've engaged with on Facebook. What that means is what type of posts have they commented on, liked, shared, or clicked on. So you need to really put yourself in the mind of the small business owner. <clears throat> Chances are they've been engaged with some type of small business content in their Facebook feed. Now here's where you get your more bang for buck because you could just say that your niche is small business in Auckland. That's not a niche. Um, the more niche you go, the more that you can target your message to them and make it really more specific and compelling. So um, let's use, hey, maybe this is business recovery. So maybe there's some people who are also struggling a little bit with their cash flow right now. And you could also target a particular um, vertical, industry vertical, such as retail. Um, now, a retail business owner is probably engaged with some type of retail content, um, but then you can really go a little bit out of the box and, hey, a retail business owner or manager is probably interested in shopping. Um, so, bear in mind, this is a direct interface with Facebook, so it's American spelling, American terms, um, but have a play around. Here, 440,000 people could see my ad. I'm going to start this ad tomorrow, and I'm only going to run it till the 1st of July because my webinar is on the 2nd. You can choose the start and finish time as well if you like. Then set your budget. Now, my account's New Zealand based, so it's 20 NZD, but it's 20 AUD or 20 pounds, um, whatever it is your region. So I'm just going to pop in $100. And the more you spend, though, the more likely um, more of this audience will see your ad. And what we want to do as well is we want our ad to be shown to these people multiple times because people never take action the first time when they see some advertising, it takes a few goes. So I've defined my audience, next I need to build my ad. And a webinar is a really great, uh, oops, did I miss something on there? Oh, my budget's not enough, so I'll just bump that up to 200. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, a webinar is a really great way to prospect for new leads because you've got something really immediate and of value to offer. So first um, step of our ad is choosing an image, upload your own or choose one from our library of 1.7 million images. I'm gonna stick with that one in the interest of time. Save and continue, where we now get a chance to build the message of our ad. Build it on the left and there's a preview on the right. Now, I've already, just in a separate document, built my ad content in the interest of time. 
So I'll copy that and paste it into here. So I'm letting people know what they're going to learn, what the value of it is, a little bit about the agenda, the website URL, that's where they're going to go to register. So I've got my go to webinar link here. Pop that into the website URL and then my headline, I've also defined that. So something catchy that will hopefully capture their attention quickly. This one's probably, whoops, probably a little bit long to be honest, but that's okay. Choose your call to action, sign up being the appropriate one when you're registering for a webinar. So here's a little preview of our Facebook ad. You can see where the heading and the URL, our sign up button are there. And if you've never seen any ads on Instagram, this is what it looks like. So we save that. So in a nutshell, we've used content from Boma's content library at, of the Gap to nurture our current audience on the topic of business recovery then we hit them with an event invite and now we've built an ad to target this audience who will be scrolling through facebook and instagram during this date and time they'll see this ad and think yeah i could definitely do with a little bit of help on that they'll click on sign up and they'll go and register for your webinar so we've maximized as many opportunities as we can to uh to get bums on bum, virtual <laughs> bums on seats to our event. Um, so okay. now, Nat, what else have we got to we can check out today? Well, I, I did want to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, adapting our marketing um, in the wake of lockdown and and you know the COVID realities. So, you know, there's a lot of information that we, um, we need to think about when running a webinars or when really starting to hit the ground running with content marketing, but also we need to take that um, into mind with you know a, a bit of a fresh lens in this post COVID world. So it is about giving value before we extract value, um, but also, you know, I don't know if the firms in the room are anything like us at The Gap. We, we developed this beautiful marketing plan at the start of the year and we were all pumped and excited about, you know, the workshops and the seminars and the things that we had in our pipeline for the year. COVID hit and then we had to literally put it on ice and start again. So we've just kind of redone our marketing plan. It's Well, we did it kind of first week of lockdown and, and we were doing it every, every month really because we just didn't know what the business landscape was going to be like. So we're starting to get a bit more of a sense of normality here in, in New Zealand and also in Australia. But it's about, you know, thinking about what's in our messaging and how our clients are feeling right now when we go forth um, and market in, in these ways. So I don't know about you, I've certainly heard some tone deaf marketing in the last <laughs> three months. Um, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, it's just sticking to an existing plan they had and not realizing that that could be potentially damaging. Like my favorite was listening to an ad um, when we were in lockdown about how if I, I think, purchased some whiteware or something, I would go in the drawer to win 10,000 air points from Air New Zealand. And I thought, this is not the time to be running that campaign. So really thinking about what's really relevant now, what content should we be sending now? you know are our clients in that state of business recovery planning are they still in crisis mode if they're in another part of the world um, and how are we gonna support them one thing's for sure uh, accountants and bookkeepers are typically somewhat gun shy when it comes to marketing and selling anyway mm. so we don't want you guys to stop marketing and that might be that natural you know reaction to a mm. oh it's not normal marketing's not normal at the moment I'll just stop marketing that's not good that's not going to be helpful to your clients right now so thinking about okay what can I do what is in the right tone at the moment and how can I support my clients with marketing because marketing really is about giving value mm. yes we're going to extract some on the other side or we're going to start a close relationship with our you know potential leads or our existing clients we might work with them a bit closer but the last thing we want to do is stop marketing right now we just need to get a bit clearer on how we can give value and think about what's you know front of mind at the moment so if your clients um, are feeling really burnt out at the moment, like 
60% of employees, apparently, I think, around New Zealand are feeling pretty burnt out mm -hmm. post-lockdown, then thinking about topics that could help them with that. Or if you know their cash flow is under strain, or if you know that they've, they're having to pivot, they're having to change the way that they do business, um, or that, you know, in six months' time, some of the opportunities they have now may dry up. Thinking about those and thinking about the kinds of topics that can help people with their product development plans um, because it's really all up for discussion at the moment you know we not only threw our marketing plan out out the window um, at the end of March we, we threw our development plans our business plan everything kind of became completely out of date and we will revisit some of that stuff um, down the track but at the moment it's trying to establish that new normal mm, and, and yeah I'm sure it's the same for you guys. Definitely, yeah. And we're really focused on providing content in the content library, as I'm sure you guys are with your content that's really relevant to these current times. You know, there's sure there's plenty of historical content about ways to grow your business, as an example. Well, a lot of people just struggling to survive right now. So mm. that kind of content is probably not really right. It's not going to um, be as effective right now. Exactly right, yeah. Yep. So it's about, I guess, constantly adjusting the message, you know, like we might look back in another month's time and things look completely different. You know, we've got mm -hmm. economists saying 8 million different things. We've got really no touch with what's happening outside of our borders. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, so really thinking about what you can do now, you know, what topics are relevant to your clients now? How can you help them now? Um, and at The Gap, we have certainly got um, a number of our members who are running webinars and they have been overwhelmed with the feedback they've got from that process, with the learning for themselves, for their team members, the engagement, um, and the fact that some of them are getting quite big growth at the moment because, you know, some of these new these small businesses have reached out, of the, out to them as part of the webinar. They hadn't even heard from their accountant. So... Yeah. Now, is that using the uh, um, the webinar topics that are in your portal? It is, and I'll, I'll just show you briefly awesome. um, the kind of topics that we're talking about. So, you know, we're working a lot on this. As I said, we changed, we pivoted our development plan, and we know that this is a space where our GAP members are getting a lot of engagement. So we've looked at, you know, we've already released Cash Flow Freedom. We've already released the Getting Paid webinar. We've done a number in the space around, you know, government support updates. Um, business continuity planning, the new businesses as usual. Uh, we do see that a lot of the webinars in future are going to lead back to those service options and business recovery planning because there's a lot of work to be done in that space and business recovery planning is going to be relevant for a really long time, you know, six to nine months at least, uh, maybe beyond that. So, um, yeah, so whether you're a GAP member or you want to run your own webinars, it's just about thinking about the types of topics um, that your client's going to get value from and the expertise and the experiences that you guys have had um, as the trusted advisor and converting that into valuable information in the webinar. Uh, and then really getting clear on what kind of service options you can offer um, your attendees at the end of the webinar as part of that kind of closing five minutes to really say, okay, guys, we've given you some value. How can we work closer together? For those of you who want more, um, how are the ways? So when it comes to getting better in engagement, there are some, there are some ideas, some, some rules, some things that can help us there. Uh, we're firm believers at the gap in the, in the giving options um, thinking. So we, we wanna give our clients and our prospects the choice of yeses is kind of what we refer to it. So at the end of the webinar, and we've given this value, we, we might position three ways of working with, um, with the, the clients on the line. So it might be that we offer a really big significant service such as business recovery planning. You know, it's something where there's going to be time together. There's going to be a pretty robust pre-work process first. So the client's going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, and then we're going to work together online and we're going to come out with this fantastic plan. And then we might even offer some accountability after that in some form of coaching. So that's kind of the big dog service option. Ideally, most of our clients would be up for that. But all, we, all of our clients are different shapes and sizes. We've got big companies. We've got small one-man bands. Some have resources, some don't. So we need to offer 
a low cost and hopefully a no cost option as well. So the low cost option could be a cut down version of, of a big service. It might be a small piece of pre-work that asks, you know, 10 questions that really gets the client thinking. Then they answer those questions and then you might be able to give them a little bit of a, you know, a 10 minute conversation call them up for 10 minutes and say, hey, I loved what you said. Have you thought about X, Y, Z? Have a bit of a fun conversation, whether you charge for that or not, whether you make it half an hour, whatever, that's up to you. The no cost option could be providing something like a free personal budgeting tool or, or a resource that really has good value, but you're not, you know, you're not having to spend time um, producing that for the client. So giving people options. Um, yeah, so, and then it's about looking at the changing, the work, changing work landscape and really adapting your content marketing in between the gaps. So you might be running, you know, a webinar or two a month, but how are you going to keep engaging people in between those webinars? How are you going to keep talking to the themes and the ideas that are in their minds at the time? How are you going to help them achieve mind, time, financial freedom um, in the gaps? Um, but one thing's for sure, when it comes to marketing, um, you know, leveraging your time. This is why you're looking at products such as Boma and the Gap. It's all about communicating with your clients en masse, giving them support in a leveraged way, um, and hopefully generating some engagement um, yeah, and some conversations. On that, that um, our Boma users um, sent twice as many uh, campaigns um, as pre per previous months during the sort of immediate level four lockdown stage. It was incredible to see. So obviously, you know, being able to communicate to, you know, one to many um, means that you can dedicate your time when needed to your clients one-on-one -on -one, um, by sharing the content. Um, it just makes it a lot easier to share um, those messages and that really valuable information quickly and effectively to your audience and prospects. Absolutely, absolutely. And you can think about, you know, how you adapt, you know, you, what, how you did it in lockdown might be slightly different to, you know, how you do it now. You know, we know that w webinar times, typically the best time of day is two o'clock on a Tuesday, um, but it might be that you run a webinar that time and then you run it again at eight o'clock at night because perhaps you've got a whole lot of mum and dad business clients who, you know, want to put that time aside once the kids are in bed. So thinking about how you can leverage your time, but also work with your clients and their current, you know, constraints. So mastering the call to action, like, this is really where I feel our content has a clear point of difference with other content. Um, and whether you're a, you know, just a BOMA user or you're a GAP subscriber as well, you can really master the art of the call to action. It's just about getting clear on the value of your service offering. And that starts with looking at your objectives. So if you know you want to work with your clients or prospects in a certain way, be that business recovery planning or whether you want to be an accountability coach, whatever it is you want to do, perhaps you're all about cash flow forecasting. It's getting clear on your objectives. If it's making sales in either of those, then getting that clear and then thinking about how you can make sure you, you deliver value with that service and then articulate that value in your marketing and then reverse engineer that that outcome with the call to action. It's the most compelling way to do it. Mm. So I guess when we're talking about nurturing existing clients, we also need to think about those leads that might fall out of, you know, that webinar or perhaps people who might start engaging with your social posts if you're uh, not sending webinars, but you are posting across your social channels. So there's, there's lots of ways we can, we can keep, um, keep the interest going and keep the engagement going. Webinars are particularly effective because you have an opportunity to engage with the different personas, um, you know, who come to your webinar. They're the people who turn up who say nothing. There are the people who register and have great intentions of coming but don't quite make it. There are the people who ask lots of questions. There are the people who tick the box and say, yes, I want to do business recovery planning with you. Um, and so we can look at them and we can nurture them in different ways, can't we, Kat? Absolutely. Yeah, that's such a good point that, yeah, you've, the more segmented and personalized you can get with your follow-up, the better and the more powerful it's going to be. 
in hay if you have to for those attendees that were really highly engaged to ask lots of questions follow them up individually you know of course the the people that don't turn up you can send them a recording of the webinar and send that one email to many um, but those individuals that were super engaged and usually the platforms whether it's zoom or go to webinar will show you how engaged people were and you can then follow up with them accordingly now yeah. um, there's often a really really clear um, attendee report that pops out I know that that comes yes. out of go to webinar probably is the same as zoom and so That's you get right. all that information in one place and it's really like it's like a treasure chest you can look at it and go oh only three people asked for you know information on that service or you could look through the whole thing and see the opportunities that lie everywhere and often it's just about reaching out because the accountants and bookkeepers are shyer when it comes to marketing and selling so people mm. are really receptive to that engagement very much so and not only that don't forget about the people who didn't even register you've got a great resource in the recording of that webinar that you've delivered and you can use that in multiple ways one great way is to uh, i'm just going to share my screen is to use the recording to take little snippets from it and uh, 30 seconds to a minute cut little snippets of just really catchy little bits that someone said put that on your social media they can, uh, we do that at BOMA occasionally and they work really well. You know, people say to me, I'm not sure what to share on social media. There's one great example. Another option is to use the webinar recording as what's known as a lead magnet. So you can have it on your website um, as a downloadable resource and use that to attract leads. And I'll show you how to do that. Now in BOMA, you can do that with a landing page. A landing page is basically a lead capture form. So here's my business recovery webinar form. I've just opened that up um, and I just realized there's a little typo there. So I've named my form, it's just for my reference, but you can see I've completed the heading and body here. So basically what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give prospects something of value, which is a recording of a really great webinar on business recovery. But first, they need to give me their details. So I get something of value, which is a prospect, and they get something of value, which is the recording. I need to let people know what they're leaving their details for. They'll submit the fields that you decide to capture and which ones are compulsory. Less is more here. People don't want to complete a novel before they get access to a resource. So ideally, if you can get away with it, just email and first name as a minimum field. Now I've also included this terms and conditions checkbox. So basically they agree that I can continue sending them marketing materials. They click submit. In this case, their data is entered into my BOMA database. What that means is I can continue marketing to them on this topic ongoing. So they might download this webinar, but I know that, hey, they're really interested in that as a topic. Maybe their business is struggling. So I can share additional content from BOMA's content library relevant to this area and hey, and share some of my services and just keep nurturing them and you just might hook them, <laughs> so to speak. Um, once they've co completed, uh, or sorry, hit that submit button, then on this post submit tab, that's where you direct them to the page where you've got the webinar hosted. So this would be a page on your website that's not, you can't navigate through it. It's not bright, bright on your homepage or under a resources tab ideally, because you don't want them to find it. You want them first to leave their details and then you can send them where they can resource. And in the settings, I've assigned a tag. So I know these are prospects versus clients and I know that they've downloaded this business recovery webinar. I've chosen to get an email anytime someone completes this form. So, hey, I can get in touch with them and maybe give them a little bit of a nudge along um, and share some of our services that can help them if this is an area of concern for them. So not only are we going to advertise our webinar to get some prospects, we're gonna use that recording afterwards to keep prospecting for new leads. So it's a, you know, it's, it's a resource that you can use again and again. Now I wanted to show you 
a bit of a case study on someone that's done that really well. So here we have Maisie Harris, a BOMA and, um, excuse me, <coughs> BOMA and GAP user from Tauranga here in New Zealand. So they ran the business recovery website, uh, webinar. Um, they did it on the 26th of May. They started marketing on the 20th of May, so quite a short lead time. And hey, that's not unusual in, um, in these times to have a short lead way for marketing an event. But as a minimum, if you can have a couple of weeks, it just gives you a little more opportunity to get that on people's radar. So they did that one great post. They've used Eventbrite in this case to capture those leads. But they didn't just rest on their laurels. Two days later, they did another post on the same thing, but they've changed up the image. They've changed some of the text. So just tweaking their marketing because different posts catch different people's eyes. So they've done that really well. Now they ran the event and then they did a post event summary. Hey, here's some thoughts. Here's what we learned with a really great image. Um, this is actually taken from one of the slides in the webinar they delivered. So another great opportunity. Sure, the event happened, but they've done this lovely little summary post. Now they've actually said, hey, drop us a message and we'll send you a recording. So that's another option. Now it doesn't finish there because just over a week later or two weeks later, they ran the event again. So, you know, they've done the hard work, they've run the event and they're like, hey, that was great. Let's do that again. The second time it's going to be so much easier. What they've also done well is the second time they've run it in combination with the Chamber of Commerce. So getting access then to the audience of their business partner. So just another way to um, expand their reach and get more uh, prospects attending this event. And they also marketed that one a couple of times. So yeah, there's one great example of someone that's done um, a really great job with marketing a webinar and, and, and use that resource in multiple ways. And it's really simple, isn't it, Kat? It doesn't take a lot of time. All of mm. the information is typically there, ready to go. You've just yep. got to adapt it to your brand and hit schedule. Yep. And then the more you do it, the, the easier it gets. you got so, it. Yeah, and so this just really sums up that a little bit, really. Um, you know, follow-up being the most important part. You know, you've got your planning. You're sure you can get people invited, but you could potentially, as it says there, squander those leads if your follow-up mm. isn't effective. And, yeah, as and Matt mentioned, that segmentation and those different sort of options for them, that's pretty key. Mm. It's definitely really important um, that you put the time into the planning and then you put the time into the follow-up. And mm. the, the, the funny thing is that with our members, because we work closely with our members to help them, you know, get up to speed with running webinars, they're always nervous about the middle piece, but actually the middle piece, the delivery piece is the easy bit because you guys are experts in your field. You have, you know, vast experience and knowledge. It's actually the planning that sets you up to succeed. And then the follow up is where you get all the results. So with planning, you know, there, it's all about consistent and con constant marketing. You can't send one email and expect to get bums on seats. You've got to mix it up a bit. And, you know, sometimes it might be reaching out to some of those top clients who you know uh, are probably due a phone call or some interaction and inviting them along. Mm -hmm. So plan effectively, follow a seamless process. And then on the other side, don't expect people to go hands up straight away. It might be that you know that there's a real long tail on 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 getting those leads or those clients um, locked into to working with you closer but either way you're going to give them an awful lot of value mm. so it's yeah it's Quite. really worth it cool so let's jump into some questions cool uh, right so first up Nat there was one what tech should I use since that was a bit of a concern. For yes, some people right it was. Yeah, so good point. We we tend to focus in the gap on, we use GoToWebinar ourselves. That's partly because we've been ru running webinars for a long time and GoToWebinar was probably the only platform really at the beginning that could do what we needed. Zoom's come a long way. Um, you know, when it comes to sending automated exit survey questions, Zoom doesn't have the same capability as GoToWebinar. Um, and you do need to purchase up spec to that webinar pack 
when you go with Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, Zoom seems to be pretty good for a lot of a lot of our member firms in the gap. So either or, again, we've got that guide to scheduling a webinar in our portal that really breaks down very simple steps for both of those systems. And all of our webinars have kind of intro slides depending on what platform you use. And you just delete the Zoom one if you're using GoToWebinar or delete GoToWebinar if you're using Zoom. But mm -hmm. both are fantastic. And hey, you don't have to use either of those. It's really about using what you're comfortable with. Um, but one thing's for sure, having a few practices, making sure you've got someone who's somewhat tech savvy, moderating or supporting you um, is great. Mm. Hey, and if you're, a, you know, if you'd like some people to practice with, sing out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so have a healthy, when I have a practice with the technology, we can be pre pretend participants. Mm. Um, if you don't have a big team, then um, yes, yeah, sing out, we'd love to help you. And that's what it's all about. Practice makes perfect. And when you're comfortable with the tech, that makes it a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> mm. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, we'll set a question. I use Boma. How do I get access to the extra um, Gap content? So um, the, that is um, the Gap premium content is available if you are a Gap member firm. So reach out to the Gap. We'll send you some information afterwards. Um, you can have a little bit of a demo, sign up for a trial and um, take a look at um, the amazing content in the portal, which you've got a little preview of today. There's a heck of a lot more to see. But as you can see, you know, if you're struggling to, um, I guess, create or like define, you know, position market your advisory kind of services, then that's really where the gap um, can help streamline that for you. You've seen um, today some of the I guess, ways to deliver the marketing on those services. But in the, the Gap portal, they can really help you really productize that. Is that the right way of describing yeah, we, it? Now? We typically describe our, the Gap as the accountant or bookkeeping firm's outsourced product development department. Nice. So you, you guys do your compliance piece. You do that really well. You've got, you know, your technology gains, you know, as we, that evolves. But in terms of constantly innovating, we want to be that piece for you guys. We can do the innovation for you. And also we give you the flexibility in the portal to be able to adapt some, you know, and create your own templates and your own systems as well that are all housed in that one portal. Nice. Um, I have noticed there's some great questions in the chat mm. pane. I wondered if we wanted to dig into some of those. Yes. So they haven't come through the questions pane, but yeah. our first one um, I think I'll take, which is given GAP is New Zealand based, how do the GAP keep across Australian specific issues and how is content sourced? So it's a really good question. Um, we do have um, someone on the ground in Australia and I guess we do, um, we do a few bit of research here. We typically, try to shy away from topics topics that um, are compliance heavy or are going to need a lot of updating over time and I know COVID has been quite unique um, and we have certainly pivoted or widened our lane to include a fair bit of support around government updates um, and that sort of stuff so in that space we did um, create content for the New Zealand market and the UK market at the time we did some work in the Australian market as well, but I believe there weren't as many updates coming out on that. So we are keeping, trying to keep fresh on that. And we also have a really beautiful Facebook community group where we um, are in contact with our you know, super users, I guess, the people who are involved there. And we're always getting their support, their feedback on what they want. And sometimes they'll even give us stuff. Hey, could you wrap Mm -hmm. um, turn this into a webinar or could you use this to update this form so we really love kind of that core value of agility where we are out there to support you guys if you've got a great idea then how yeah we're going to put that into our portal for you where we can yep. nice and did I really with BOMA we've um, got content writers in Australia New Zealand and the UK so they're the kind of the regions that we can um, write specialists same territories for. as us yeah that's right yep mm. Um, now, there was a question, what do you use to market through LinkedIn? Um, not quite I am under sure I understand the meaning of that question, but BOMA integrates with LinkedIn to both a business page and a personal profile. So any of the content in our library can be really easily shared through both of those platforms. Um, 
oh. now oh someone's using loom for webinars and do we have a view on that i'm not i didn't know loom did webinars to be honest <laughs> I didn't know either. I wonder yeah. if that's new or not. I mean, mm. Loom's a great platform. We, mm. we use it probably for a very small slice of what it's designed for, just recording um, tutorials and videos for our clients. But as I said, use what you're comfortable with. Mm. Yeah. It's about making sure that you've got um, enough tech to be able to control the webinar in a way that doesn't distract you from your presenting. That's the only thing I would say. Cool. And that's yeah, where Zoom and GoToWebinar are quite effective because mm. um, it's that fine line between wanting to answer everyone's questions while you're presenting and then remembering <laughs> it's actually really hard to yep. talk while you move your mouse. <laughs> Good yeah. point. Hey, and it might be even be worthwhile trying things like, don't forget there's Facebook Live and yeah. options like that as well. Yeah. We're, we're kind of foraying into Facebook Live at the moment, mm. in particular in our, our member Facebook community group, which is a closed group just for our members. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're finding that really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, so a couple more questions. One being, if you want to do a social media ad for wider locations, instead of entering just Auckland, for instance, what would you suggest? Um, so there is um, an Auckland region, so you can get sort of region specific and you can even do all of New Zealand um, or you can add in multiple regions. I don't think they have a North Island, for example, but to be honest, I'd be wary of going um, wider than a city um, because your message is going to get diluted. So sometimes the advertising uh, less is more in that regard. So be cautious with um, going wider than a city. Mm. And Nat, this last one's probably for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you, yeah. Do you want to read out the question? Some of our best watched webinars um, are related to providing clients with practical how to do this, especially related to, related to zero. Does the gap provide this kind of content? So I would say, I think it's probably a little bit subjective, but I would say that some of our webinars absolutely are how to do this. So for example, the seven ways to grow your business. You know, the key areas you need to look at to address to you know, to get growth, if that's what you're looking at. Um, you know, th there is a lot of how to do this in it. Um, is it like, like with real practical steps? Yeah, I think so. Mm. This, yeah, and we've got, um, we've got the, what's it called? The 10, 10 steps to build a better business. That's mm. a seminar that we're also at the moment reverse engineering into a webinar, um, building a better business in 10 steps. So yeah, it is very how to. We, we don't, currently have anything for, for zero and I don't imagine we would because they've probably got that area covered and it seems to be a lot of firms already doing that mm. but absolutely our focus in the next three to six months is about building out more webinars because the resounding feedback we're getting from our GAP members is that they are getting huge leads from running these webinars the return on investment is massive and they're really enjoying it and not many people are doing it mm. so you know what we in the business world and our, you know, in our industry, I do feel like we get a lot of invitations to webinars, but for the SMEs themselves, they're not getting nearly as much as that. So when they see that pop up on their Facebook feed, that's quite, in some ways, unique. It's a very different experience for them. So it's a good point. Yeah, because I feel a little bit like there's webinars happening oh. a few times a week sometimes. Yep. But you're right, it's probably the SMEs that are not having that same experience. So that's, yeah, something to bear in mind. Yeah. Okay, so where to next? Um, both BOMA and um, The Gap have a free 14-day trial. If you'd like to know more on either, you can book in for a demo. Now we will uh, send you a follow-up email, the Savo, um, or tomorrow morning at the latest, with details on how you can access that. Uh, if you are a BOMA user that is a Gap member and you either don't have, if you're not sure if you've got The Gap, um, premium content then you can get a code from the gap and pop into BOMA to your content library there's a little add button where you can add that code to release the premium content so um, the beauty of content marketing really is that it's it's not salesy um, you're providing something of value and, and it's also about reading the mood um, and providing value that's really relevant to the current state of play as well so um, yeah, if you're nervous about being salesy, then your yeah, content marketing, using webinars to provide a ton of value and advice to your client is a really great way to market right now.
Absolutely. So thank you all for your time. Thank you, Nat. Um, we'll follow up very shortly a copy of the recording if you'd like to watch it again or pass it on to anybody else and details on how you can access um, more information on the Bone Ring Gap. Thanks Absolutely. you all. Have a great Tuesday afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Bye. Cheers. Bye.